Amen. Number three, are we ready here today? How many of you ready for the final way? You can bless the blesser. You can bless him by being thankful. How many of you are thankful today? Amen. You can bless him by being a giver. How many say, I'm going to be a giver? Amen. And the third way you can bless him, my friend, is you can bless him by putting your trust in his faithfulness. Now let's go back to that kid with the M&Ms for a minute. I know this is your son and daughter, okay? Can you imagine that you give your son or your daughter some money for candy and they come back with M&Ms and this is the attitude that they have. They say this, thank you, mom. Thank you, dad. You were so kind in giving me that dollar to go get these M&Ms. I, I sure do appreciate it. I'm the most thankful little boy on the entire planet. I'm so grateful for what you did. And by the way, Mom, Dad, would you like a few? Let me help you to a few M&Ms. And, and they just begin to thank you. They begin to give back to you. And they're blessing the blesser. And then they say something like this. And you know something, Mom and Dad? You've always been so good to me. Every time. And if they're in Texas, they'll say something like this. Every time I get a hankering for some M&M's, you always give me money for M&M's. And I trust you that in the future, anytime I need some candy or even want some candy, I know who you are, Dad. Yeah, I know who you are, Mom. And they can especially say this to grandparents. Come on. I know who you are, Grandpa and Grandma. If I want something, you're going to bless me. I trust you completely with all of my M&M needs. How many think that would be a great kid right there? Come on. That would be a great kid, wouldn't it? And you know something? That's the kind of kids God's looking for. God's looking for those kind of children, hello? Those kind of children that have that idea of thankfulness, that have that idea of giving some back to the Lord, and also have that spirit of saying and the attitude of saying, I'm going to trust you with everything about my life. Amen. That would be awesome. You can be that. But you know, there are two negative attitudes that sometimes creep in and they eat away at that trust level. They eat away at that spirit of confidence that we have in the Lord. And I want to talk about them real quickly today. The first one is worry. How many of you know when you worry, do I got any worriers in here? You don't have to raise your hand. But when you worry, what you're actually saying to the Lord is this. I don't really have much confidence in you, God. You're probably not going to handle this very well. I don't think you're quite big enough to take care of my situation and my problems. And therefore, I'm going to worry about it and stress out about it because it's probably going to fall onto me and I'm going to have to deal with all of this stuff anyway. How many of you know that doesn't provoke much confidence in the Lord? You're worrying. Amen. You're saying, God, i got to handle this. You know, let me tell you what the Lord says. Jesus said, Matthew chapter 6. He said, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you're going to drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? When you're worrying, what you're saying is, Lord, you know, I'm not even as much value as a bird because you take care of the bird, but you're not going to take care of me. Which of you by worrying can add one cubit to his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, neither, they don't neither toil or spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how will he not much more clothe you? Or, uh, oh, you of little faith. And then I love this last part, beginning at verse 31. Amen. Therefore, do not worry. Tell your neighbor, don't worry. Don't worry. Trust. Tell your neighbor, you can trust. Do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows you have need of all these things. And here's the key, my friend. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these other things including a nice beautiful 54 caliber musket will be added to you come on somebody give the Lord a hand of praise today come on maybe you're not excited about it I am put God's kingdoms first and he'll add everything that you need if God can be trusted to feed the birds and clothe the lily he will take care of you 
And there's one other thing that's even worse than worry. That is moaning and groaning and complaining. Murmuring. I was doing that one day on the telephone with my late father-in-law. He was a plain-spoken person. He simply said this to me. He said, Bob, God doesn't like moaners and groaners. I'm like, you know, he's right. He's right. And, you know, there's a great illustration in the Old Testament. Those slaves that came up out of Egypt, they were moaners and groaners. Why did you bring us out here? We're going to perish in the wilderness. Why, Moses, did you bring us out here? You know what they were doing? They were insulting their very God who would let them out. The very God who parted the Red Sea. The very God who was feeding them manna every single day. They were saying, who are you? They, 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 were, they, were, they did not have any confidence of him. And they said, we wish we were back in Egypt eating garlics and leeks and onions. It's a good thing the Lord just doesn't have the spirit of slap. Come on, somebody. He had to come down and say, what you talking about, garlics and leeks? You were a slave a couple of months back. What's wrong with you today? Come on. Y'all never heard of the spirit of slap. And it just goes on and on. We don't have enough water. I'm so tired of eating this supernatural provision. Who, does, who says, I'm tired of eating manna. I'm so tired of eating this manna. Don't you know God can bring water out of a rock? Don't you know he can send wind and bring lots of quail to you so you can have some Thanksgiving dinner? Come on. And ultimately, uh, you know, you know uh, that generation perished in the desert. <laughs> I don't want to be like one of them, amen? I, I don't want to be a moaner, groaner, murmurer, complainer. Let me tell you what I want to be. I want to be a truster and a praiser. Come on, somebody. I said, I want to be a truster and a praiser, amen? I want to be like Joshua and Caleb, amen? When they went in there and they saw the giants and they saw the walled cities while others were moaning and groaning, oh, it's too big, it's too hard, God can't do it. No, sir, they still stood up and said, we got to go right now and go up there and possess the country because our God's able to deliver it into our hands. Come on, somebody. Do I got any praisers in the house? Do I got any Joshua's and Caleb's? Amen. Who said, I don't care what it looks like right now. And how many of you know, they had to wait a long time right, for the blessing to finally get to them. But there was finally a day when old Caleb stood in front of Joshua and he said, I come to get what's mine. You see that piece of property up there where the giants are? Y'all chickens have not been able to drive them out. I'll take that mountain called Hebron. Give it to me because the same God who empowered me when I'm 40, I'm 85 now. But you better look out. Those giants are coming down in the name of the Lord our God. I tell you, I'm looking for some praisers in the house. I'm looking for some people who say, I'm going to trust Him anyway. I don't care what the circumstances look like. I don't care how many doubters there are. I don't care how many naysayers. I have a God who's able to see me all the way through. And my confidence is not in Bob. Come on. My confidence is not in the assemblies of God. My confidence is not in Fountain of Life Christian. In center. My confidence is in the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ, who got up out of the grave on that third day. Y'all better be careful. I might start preaching up in here today. Amen. I'm just telling you, I'm feeling good today. The Lord is with us. Amen. Do I got any people who say, I trust God for my M&Ms. I trust Him for my M&Ms. Would you stand with me today? Amen. God.